All right, Mike. Uh, let's think of, I, I always think of you because you're not in that uh, in that. Uh, That's true. That I'm not in, in the picture. That's right. I'm... Uh, let's take a look here at some uh, news. So first we have from Arcane Wonders. This is first I've heard of this. A new standalone Mortem Medieval detective game. That was kind of a escape room style game. You know, I was under the impression that game wasn't particularly well received. Uh, yeah, it kind of came and went. What uh, game are we talking about? Mortem, Mortem Medieval, Medieval Detective. We had oh, it here in the studio. Yeah, yeah. I actually did not play that one. I'm not sure who here did. I did not play it. Many of the people I talked to were not impressed by it. Okay. But who knows? Maybe, yeah. it's, maybe it's better than I thought. Um, anyway, this is a, a standalone sequel, I suppose. I'm not even sure if it's in the same... Oh, no, it does pick up where you left after oh, the last one. Okay, okay. So the beginning. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. it's 100 to 180 minutes, but it's only 20 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. That's a good, yeah. I mean, so I'm guessing, does that, I wonder if that means that the base game is also kind of one of those things that you play through. I don't know if it's replayable or not. If the stories are connected yeah. also. Right, right, right. I wonder. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember the original cover was very plain, and mm -hmm. so is this one. I think a little more would go a long way on that cover. I yeah. agree. That cover does not make me want to play the game. It looks more like a book, and that's fine, but yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look at this next cover here. Triggs, <laughs> which makes me think of trigonometry for some reason. That sounds like the, what the, the math teachers who are trying to be cool. Yeah. That's what they say. They're like, hey, welcome to Triggs. Yo, kids, welcome to Triggs. <laughs> Get ready to have your mind expanded. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's a card. Roll and write. Ah, um, okay. It looks like an NSV game, right? I apologize. It sure does. <laughs> I'm getting bored reading this. Uh, you are making the numbers one to twelve pair, two to five times each. Drawn. Okay. Anyway, it's coming. It's, a, it's an NSV game, yeah. like you said. They have a thing they do. This is another one of the ones they do. All their cards look alike. All their mm -hmm. games are kind of roll and rights, and they have tracks. And they're been decent. Some that are pretty good. They're yeah. Decent. It's yeah. fine. It, this is not jumping out as something new they're doing. I don't normally do like to go by their booth when I make it to Germany, though. And, and you might be into the one that comes after Alge. Darn it! I was trying to make an algebra joke. Couldn't do it. You, you can't. Did, you, you can't shorten it. algebra. You did it. You did it. Al Alge. <laughs> 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 uh, it was good up here. That didn't work it was out good. so well. It coming out, worked, yeah. Mike. You yeah. should have just let that one. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. Let it. Let it lie there. Let it die on the My cover's terrible. All right, moving on. We have. It's either. Cubosaurs, that's which would, would make say. sense, yes. but it looks like it's Cubosaurs yeah. because that's all that they've highlighted is the word cub. I yeah. feel like the O should have been included, right? I agree. Yeah. Cubosaurs. Uh, yeah, that's true. Like dino sores. Right. No one says din o <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyhow, this is also, this is almost at a point where when I see this blockiness and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm a little out because it's really cool. Once. Is yeah. this related to that Q Birds? I don't game? know. This it's is being from catch up. Yeah, games. that's what I was gonna say. I looked at a couple of cards. It looks like it's primarily a card game. Um, and it looks from what I saw the back of the box, I saw a picture of the back of the box on Board Game Geek. And it looked to me relatively light mm -hmm. card game, maybe a set collection type of a thing going on well, with that Q art style. Catch up did make Q Birds. Oh, they did. So maybe this it's is related. not the same designer, though. It's, the, it's the Cube Universe, though. <laughs> the Cube Universe. <laughs> cube Birds is spelled C U, though, and then Birds. Okay. That, they're, they're really wow, we've been mispronouncing yeah. it this whole time. It's Cub Birds. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they're really. But if it is in the same universe, that's really weird that they. I probably not. It's just. It's just weird. Uh, it's the same company that make Q-Birds and Cubosaurs. No, it's got to right. be the same kind of thing. You, it almost has to be, right? Also, I'd like to point out that there's not a single cube in No, there's not, but there, picture. there is a lot of trigs going on there. I mean, <laughs> that's definitely a mathematical <laughs> feature. <laughs> All right. It is not a day for covers, folks. Yeah. Time of Empires. We actually have this one here in the studio, and that game looks pretty interesting. That cover is a CD-ROM from 1996 from Firaxis. It's almost so. I'm, I'm sorry, Microsoft. So much like that that I, I part I'm, of me wants to give them benefit of the doubt and I say know, they right? were going for something that's like purposely cheesy like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, Kobe. yeah. I gotta tell you though, I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, I am. It's from it's from Pearl Games. Right. Is that they, it though? Because you really like Pearl. 
That's, like, that's largely it. Yeah. That's largely it. Yeah, I really like Pearl Games. They do not put out a lot of games. They don't. And their main, the owner slash designer of some of their games, is always like a developer in the other ones. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like what they do. So, yeah, you're right. It's incredibly cheesy. It looks like a bad poster. <laughs> or actually, the CD ROM reference it's is perfect. Great. Yeah. But the game looks cool. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping that it. The, how kooky that image is comes through in the game. The sand timers don't worry you, or no? Okay. No. I mean, I we'll see what they do, how it feels, you know. Each age of the game lasts exactly nine minutes. Oh, that's right. This was interesting because there's three ages, but it's an hour game time. Antiquity, middle ages, and so modernity. Twenty-seven minutes of timed, and I guess that means that's about half of the game, and the other half would have to be like stuff in between, maybe. There's a lot of games to do that, and yeah. that's my favorite okay. way to do a time yeah, game is where you have a time, but then you go, all right, pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty psyched about this. All right. Oh, my brain <laughs> is our next thing here. This is yeah. from Bruno Catata. Do we have this one? We do, actually. Do we? Z had, you I got, bought this. He bought this uh, imported from yeah, Catch Up Games, from, actually. Uh, yeah, right. So I got it from France, mm -hmm. reviewed that. We played so that. So you can check that out if you want. So I've, I've, we've done a review of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, you already reviewed it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a neat little game. It's a, it's a fun little... Shedding, kind of? Yeah, card shedding. You know, one of those empty your hand kind of games. Mm -hmm. So not the most innovative thing out there, but it does have a cute idea with these little brains and, and sort of zombie animals right. where you're cycling your hand and if you are forced to do something you can, you got to give up your brains or take brains, I forget. Try not to run out of those. It's nice, little fun, quick loops mm -hmm. with a couple of special powers, a neat look, very vibrant, yeah. you know, you have to kind of be all in on that look. If right. you don't like that image, you're, you're going to be bothered by this. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's fun, and so obviously coming out from 25th century now. Yeah, and they kept the same cool packaging, and if that if you care about that kind of thing, which I do, they they kept the same look. That's yeah, from Lumberjack Studios. Right. Is, is the the original. 25th publisher. century is definitely pumping out games at this point. Mm -hmm. Also pumping out games to the point where I'm not keeping up with them is Whiz Kids. <laughs> yeah. I I went just yesterday and looked on like what Whiz Kids games have I missed and there's like 10 that have come out since the last time I've seen one. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been pumping them out. The problem with Whiz Kids games is they have no identity for me in that they're just all over the place. Like this right. one here, I mean that's obviously the Micho's artwork, yeah. but where did that come from? That's not a Whiz Kids thing. Right. Right? It's just this doesn't look like one of their games. I mean, I'm, that might be fine. Um, you're turning Transylvania into the world's newest tech haven. <laughs> Um, it's a top, but that you know what though. Again, knowing Whiz Kids, I could open this box and it could be the most boring looking game ever. Sure, sure. There, there's always that. Anyway, this is a tile laying game with four x four city grid, and you're collecting vampire and pet meeples to live in your city. After okay. eight rounds, it's complete. Now, I'm all joking aside, this whole build a grid and mm -hmm. then score it at the end, we're starting to really reach the realm of Critical come on now. <laughs> How many of these games can we build? That does seem to be a very in vogue type of thing going on right now. We're building a little thing mm -hmm. in front of you, some type of a grid, whether it's cards or tiles, mm -hmm. score based on placement rules or scoring conditions <laughs> around the outside, or, you know. City building games have been doing that for a while, though. Yeah, but yeah. usually city building games don't have as much restrict. You know, it's not yeah. usually. usually I want a city game to be a little sprawling. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. whole building a 4x4 four four grid, and it says it's after eight rounds, so I'm assuming you're putting out two tiles per round. Right. Um, but eh, we'll see. All right, let's get to the interesting stuff here. Mm. Catan, the official cookbook. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Wait, <laughs> what? Robber pasta, baby. Doesn't this look like a parody? Yes. This is not This is not real, right? No, this is very real. This is coming it's for a, Ulysses it, Press. Recipes inspired mm -hmm. by the best-selling board game. I okay. believe it's available right now on Amazon. You know what? This actually would make a good trivia game. Because I'm going to tell you four of the uh, recipes in it. And I Go wish ahead. I could... I'm not fast enough here to think of a fifth <laughs> one and have you guess which one's fake. Okay. But we have overnight oats, mm -hmm. chicken under a brick, <laughs> ear of plenty corn dip, robber's discard delight. Ah. All those sound like I just made them up. They do. Robbers discard delight. <laughs> I don't know if it's savory, if it's a sweet, if it's a drink. It's all of your. It's all of the stuff that you normally would throw away. <laughs> you discard it. You're going to throw it in the trash. No, put it in a pot, 
Add a little bit of chicken stock. Simmer. Is this like that couch Salt Chex mix where you like go in the corners and yeah, just put yeah. everything I in a bowl? I like that, yeah. yeah. What's chicken under a brick? It's going to be, there is there is a, a thing of like brick chicken, right? Like I've heard of that before. Press the chicken under a brick yeah. and then grill it. Something grill like that. Thing. Yeah, I've yeah, heard like of this thing before. Broil it. It's almost like the beer can chicken. There's different ways of, you right. know, cooking chicken. There better be, no joke, half the recipes better be mutton. Right, exactly. Because it's all about sheep. I would assume, right? Yeah. And grain. The other right. half is grain. That's right. You trade a, a loaf of bread and you get some mutton. Um, I could only <laughs> you gotta, see this. You, know, right? like you got to go to your neighbors and trade some stuff, but this does not work. <laughs> yeah. right. I could see if you were getting a, a gift, a holiday gift for somebody that you knew was a fan of Catan. Maybe they like to cook. This is so stupid. No, Mike. No, there's no excuse for this. I don't know. No, like, no, no. I'm sorry. That's a huge leap. I'm amused uh, by this, but of here's course what, it's a huge the lead, next thing yeah. I'm not amused by, because I think this is a, a tax on the stupid, <laughs> and that is a Catan lottery tickets. Okay. <laughs> and if, 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 I, if you think I'm calling you stupid because if you buy a lot of lottery tickets, I, I'm not calling you stupid, but that is a stupid thing to do. Right. Because you know. your chance of winning a lottery is practically nothing. You're just throwing money away. Mm. Makes you feel good, though, to scratch things off. You can scratch it off Catan. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, much better than the cookbook. The robber's going to win. You think this is uh, better? I'd rather have the cookbook. Than okay, well, I guess I got God's Christmas figured out for you. <laughs> it is about time for my realtor to send me my annual lottery ticket that she sends me as a gift for I was whatever say, It seems like lottery, scratch-off lottery tickets are a very popular gift to give somebody you don't know very well. Mm. You think so? I, I, because you don't have I think to know it's such them. a it's like, silly gift. Well, it is because a lot of times you basically you're giving them nothing. <laughs> right. You know, right. You know what I mean? You, maybe you're giving I them guess two you're bucks. Hoping, like the only way it's a win is if you buy it and you give it to them. Like I got twenty. If you if they get if you get nothing, they're mad. They're like, well, what a dumb gift. And if they win a hundred thousand dollars, you're like, oh. So I was going to ask you that. Them that, 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 asks, that 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 brings up a, a question. If you give somebody a scratch off gift. Mm-hmm. And they win a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Is there a part of you that's hoping they're going to give you a little bit? You know, like if you're at a at a, a blackjack table. Z, I know you're you're a huge yeah, fan. Yeah. You, you, you a spend big, a lot of time at the blackjack I table. Do, yeah. You win a big pot. Do you give a little something to the to the dealer? Just you're yeah. meant to. I think yeah, you're yeah, supposed here, to. Here, a little something for yourself. Get something nice for yourself. Right. That's not patronizing at all. You do. I, that, right? say, I don't think you should. You're say not it supposed that to do that. Mike. You'll be escorted out of the establishment. <laughs> like, would I do it, or are you supposed to? Do you? How, would you feel compelled if, if someone gave it to you as a gift and you got one hundred grand? You're gonna give that person a little something. Something. They'll never know if I got a hundred grand. <laughs> let's start right there. I'll be like, oh, that that was a bust. Also, let's jump in the Lamborghini and uh, go for a ride. Um, in uh, my Archie, you only went up to thirty thousand on this one, so there's yeah, that. I named my new car Triggs. <laughs> How do you even win this? Do you, all the numbers have to be the same? Ah, I don't you know. Oh, it looks like. The, yeah, the I wonder because it looks like there's in they're in rows, right? I have no this idea is so stupid. I, I like that. I'm getting one. Is that locally available? I wonder. Uh, let me look. Available in U.S. and Canada. <clears throat> All right. There you go. Okay. All right. Done. I'm getting We're not done with Catan yet. Mm-hmm. The Catan World Championship is back even though there was one last year at the World Series of Board Gaming. All right. Um, but it was actually the lowest attended of all the different championships. But that's because I think they do their own. Okay. Um, and this did not... This last time this happened was four years ago. Um... So it's going to happen in Malta. I was going to say, it's so amazing to me, and and my ignorance, I'm putting it out there, I am ignorant about the culture and much about Malta, but it seems like a very small country that has a huge board gaming, like, there's like board game publishers in Malta, and... and Content creators. Out I would of Malta I would look at it as a large city, and there's a lot of large cities that have that sort Malta's of thing. Malta's its own country. It's its own yes. country, though. Yeah, right. No, I get that, but I'm yeah. saying just think of it as a large city. You're I, yeah. not surprised when you hear Seattle has no, companies in true. it. No, that's true. I guess that's true. It's just. I mean, I think it's cool. It's just Malta's. I mean, it looks gorgeous. It, I would every love to go picture to Malta. I've seen of Malta makes me I'm be like, like uh, I want to be there. Well, you can go you. to Malta if you win. One mm. of the Catan finals and go to the World Championship, which or is going to be if you scratch off thirty November grand, next year. You could just go watch. Just go and spend Get yourself your a trip to Malta. That's kid. right. All right, we already had this mentioned this year in our summer spectacular, Hickory Dickory, which mm-hmm. is actually not the only game about clocks to be announced recently. No, but this one's actually being released right into retail. This is coming out this quarter. Yeah, um, it's a one to four player game. You are controlling. We didn't know much more. We yeah. didn't. We only knew about the. There's a clock in it. Right. Anyway, you control a team of mice. You're going on a royal scavenger hunt hosted by Lord Cuckoo. (laughs) Insert name of your boss there. Uh. (laughs) Um, 
The mice are riding on the minute hand as they search for things, and then they'll jump off the hand to collect items. That's an interesting concept. I like that a lot. I am intrigued. I mean, it does look like, you know, just from the, the aesthetic, it looks like it's going for like a family weight game, and I have no problem with that. Um, I'm intrigued. You know, I mean, I think Plat Hat tends to put out good productions. You know, I don't love all their games, but they seem to be nice productions and intriguing. It is weird that there's two games with almost the exact same theme that are being at the in, same time. Yeah, I think the other yeah. one's going to crowdfunding, but, okay. but this one is uh, coming out soon. So, yeah. All righty, and then we have, I mentioned this briefly last week, Star Wars the deck building game, because that's what I thought that really cool cover was. This cover is anything but cool. Yeah. It's, I guess, iconic to see Darth Vader fighting Luke Skywalker. This is a new deck building game coming from Fantasy Flight, and uh, apparently it's a head-to-head, -head, two-player deck building game. That's kind of cool. There's a lot of two-player head-to-head deck building games, the most popular probably being the space one. What is it? Star Realms. Star Realms. Yeah. Um, my only concern with this is it's from Fantasy Flight, and when you look at those cards, and you didn't show me, tell me anything about this, I would think it was a Star Wars uh, living card game they just did. Absolutely. Well, like five I was years saying, ago. This looks like a game that's been out for, you know what I mean? It's not a looker. It's not, no. The, uh, the Fantasy Flight does a good job with their art. I mm -hmm. like that they use art rather than stills from the movie. Sure. Is that art? Are we sure? Mm, yeah, I think yeah. so. The cover okay. especially, yeah. Okay. And they, they've always been pretty good at that. It's just that this looks like their other games. It does. It really does. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, hmm. Did they say who the designer is? Caleb Grace. I don't oh, know Caleb that Grace name. is the guy who's did, did done he, all the living card yeah, games. Like He's Marvel very involved Champions in Marvel and, Champions yeah. and, and Arkham. And yeah. He's one of their best designers right now, I would say. Well, that's Especially not really for card games, shoot right? For the I mean, moon, that's but, a, He's the lead developer of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, you're right. And Marvel Champions. Mm. So therefore, he must be amazing. Well, he's very popular. He's been doing. I I I, I think this it. will be a good game. Um, I'm just. Is it? I don't know. Are they gonna put out a pack every month? I don't That's, think it's. I don't think it's a living kind of thing. <clears throat> it doesn't have their little LCG thing. No, no, on it's the just front. a deck building game. Dominion is also not a living card game, and yet there is <laughs> 15 expansions for it. This is true. There are. Hmm. All right. Uh, this one looks cool. Let's go back to WizKids here. Mm -hmm. Age of Heroes. Now, the big thing here about this is it's from Rodney Thompson. And Rodney right. Thompson does not make many games. His most popular game is uh, Lord's Waterdeep. Right. Oh. Um, he did that with Peter Lee, I think, co-design on that. I'm excited about this one be for a few th reasons. One, because of he's being the designer. Two, instead of going to the tried and true MCU, Yeah. They are going to the classic X-Men, which is a nice change, rather yeah. than seeing yet another Captain America Iron Man game. The art is... I'm curious what people will think of the art. It's a watercolor style. I love it. But it looks cover. a little messy. Yeah. Like, when I was looking at the cards and stuff, it had the same kind of look to it. It looks like it's a stylistic choice. Right. I, I do appreciate and, and And when you do that, you're going to have some people that bounce off of it. Of course. Right, right. But I do like that they're doing something different. I like that they're doing something different with the acrylic standees. I think that's a great choice. Uh, I just read here. It's meant to look like that because it's meant to be like a powerful telepath is seeing these mutants through oh. C Cerebro. Okay, that's cool. Oh, I mean, yeah, I think it's a neat idea. I don't have as much of a background. I know you and Roy especially, and I think maybe you and are really big into the X-Men. Mm, um, but I, this is one I would definitely be be interested in playing largely because of the designer. and you know, looks like I'm doing very excited about this, and I hope it's good. Mm -hmm. I like the look. I do. I can't really tell how well uh, illustrated <laughs> those people are. It has the if I if I could see it up close, you know, yeah. then it could dip a toe into that whole like fan art mm. kind of look. Yeah, where they don't quite look right, but if they look good and this watercolor seen through Cerebro thing is a neat idea. I like yeah. that it looks different from every other Marvel X Men game. Sure, I'm in. A couple days ago, it felt like a thousand voices were suddenly went silent. Um, because they didn't go silent. Everyone started screaming when the HeroScape <laughs> project did not fund. Yeah. It's a weird, weird, the whole project, the whole thing's weird. It shows that Hasbro operates on a different plane than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Because the project was making over a million dollars at this point. I believe it was up to like 1.1. It's hard to tell because they don't do the money amount. Sure. But you had to, you had to pay at least 250 and they had over 4,000 backers. So right. that's a million. Um, almost any other company on earth would be like, thank you. And yeah. consider it a huge thing, but Hasbro wanted $2 million. Hasbro's announced they're shelving it indefinitely. 
again, it seems weird to me because all that work, all that development, they're just throwing it in the, on the, you know, in the corner. So who knows? Do you think there's any chance this is gonna, you know, I, I guess there was a part of me that was like. They're gonna produce it if it, you know. Even, I also you know, thought, I thought that they're gonna do it. But now I think they they might be like some of those big movie companies who will shelf a movie for years and years yeah. and years and not care because they're making so much money elsewhere. Well, almost. Stay tuned in one minute. Uh, um, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's kind of a bummer. But this was, in my opinion, one of the most mismanaged campaigns I've ever seen run. Mm. They have an amazing product that they know people want, and they made a lot of in my. They had a Hasbro campaign. Mm -hmm. They didn't show half the game until mm -hmm. halfway through the campaign. Right. They had one pledge level, which was two hundred and fifty dollars, mm -hmm. that gave you terrain. And if you're a fan of the game, you already have the terrain. Right. Sure. So you couldn't buy that. If you're new to the game, two fifty is an incredibly big jumping on point. The miniatures weren't painted, right. which they said is because they're better quality and cost money. Fine, but they needed to push the miniatures more then, and they didn't show good pictures of it. They didn't. They also, one of the things a lot of people liked about HeroScape back in the day was, hey, I got Revolutionary War soldiers right. fighting against Vikings, fighting against gladiators, fighting against fantasy. This was all fantasy. Yeah. Um, so it was, yes, they got the original, they got some really good people to work on it. And I'm sure the powers were good, but it looked like a terrible project from start to finish. Mm. It just didn't look good. And the box size for the game yeah. was ridiculous. It was a... Like this high, like like a long, like a box that wouldn't fit on anyone's shelf. I'd also say this as somebody that was not necessarily interested in the project and therefore maybe not the target audience. Mm -hmm. I saw nothing about this out in board game discussions media world. in general. I yeah. never saw like I never saw ads for it on on social media. I never saw stories about it other than you know a couple times people complaining. It seemed like you know there are certain games that especially that are this high profile that you mm -hmm. expect to see. I never heard anything about this. <clears throat> so does Hasbro not publicize how much they want for something like this? Is that part of the the no, gimmick? No, they need it four thousand backers. They say that. It says that yes. somewhere. And yeah, like there, there's a line to go to 4,000 backers. Okay. You can figure that out. That's $2 million, right? Got it. But I almost feel, I'm not a, I don't know, I almost feel like Hasbro had these guys come and the team, the Craig Van Ness and all them, they're very dedicated. Mm -hmm. They're like, let's do it, let's do it. Hasbro, like, fine. Let's see if it works. It didn't work. Now shut up. Yeah. That really feels like the way it is mm -hmm. because somebody, I mean, Everyone mocks Simon all the time for a yeah. lot of different things. Simon knows how to run a project. The, when a project happens, the excitement fever pitch level is there. Mm -hmm. They'll release a new figure that they show, and everyone's just going, oh, even if you hate them. And everyone knows it's coming, too. You yes. know what I mean? It's like everyone knows, but they give the people what they want, basically. And this one, it's almost like they wanted the fans to go out and recruit people, and the fans were kind of like, hey, you should support this because it exists. Which is a terrible reason that no one cares about. <laughs> right, right. Well, Hasbro's getting a bit of comeuppance here because their stock just went down a bit. Mostly because one analyst, I guess your powerful analyst here, from Bank of America went through their stuff and said that Magic the Gathering was doing much worse. Um, essentially, they said that they're overprinting cards, which we were just talking about recently. Mm -hmm. They used to do three to four core sets a year. They're still doing four to five core sets a year, but they're also doing, I think, like eight of those, what are they called? All their world. Secret layers. Yeah. Oh, and they have, they have all kinds layers, of extra the stuff. alternate world stuff. Somebody on Board Game Geek printed out a list and there was like 25 things that they came out with in 2021. Wow. 25 different sets. And yeah. when you print that many cards, people can't keep up. And when people can't keep up, they stop buying. When people stop buying, the market gets flooded. When the market's flooded, the secondary market goes down, which makes people buy less product. And the whole thing just kind of right. yeah. doesn't do as well. And they had their 30th year, 30 years celebration thing recently, which was a terrible announcement. A $1,000 box dollars. for four boosters that right. weren't even you, tournament you legal. You can't even use them. Like reprints of old cards, right. but they're not legal. They have a different back. They're not playable cards. They're proxies, mm -hmm. and they're $1,000 right? for four booster packs. I mean, so you might not even get something right. you're hoping to get yeah. and then do nothing with, but it's insane. That, Seemed a bit predatory. That was, yeah, that, that one felt uh, 
pretty bad. It was some serious sting there, I think, for people mm -hmm. who are fans of the game. It was really interesting, though, when you read the report from this guy, he, it doesn't sound like this person was some person who's like, ah, well, this is Magic the Gathering. They knew they were like looking at it from a business perspective, though. Now, this does not mean Hasbro just went out of business. No. It does show the effect of Magic the Gathering on Hasbro, though. Sure. It's pretty strong. I think, I forget what they said, it, what percentage it was, but it was pretty high. But their stock has gone down considerably. Um, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. I wonder if Hasbro will tighten up on Magic the Gathering. There's a lot of announced sets, a lot of announced <laughs> sets still coming out. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they'll start slowing that down. I feel like they're going to have to do something, right? I mean, this It would is be nice for them line. to rein it in a little bit, mm -hmm. I have to say. This is the one secret of the layers, I mean, there are dozens of them a year now. They used to be a special engagement kind of thing. They do them all the time. Very expensive. Couple of cards. Um, every, their foiling is pretty garbage and curls. Card quality has gone down, actually, from what I understand. It just, again, it's like flogging that horse. Yeah. It's about to die. They're going to keep on flogging it. I do hope this inspires a bit of a course correction for the game. Now, I know there's going to be people out there talking now, Magic the Gathering is dead, but I want to be clear mm. that this has happened many times. I sure. want to say around Ice Age or there was a period where people said oh, Magic's done. Magic's been around now for, what, 30 years? Yeah. That's a long time to be around and do this well. This is a down period but I wouldn't count it out. No, I don't think it's going anywhere. I just hope it inspires change. It has such a huge community and a dedicated community mm -hmm. that I think they themselves will keep it afloat. The company's going to have to do something to, it would be to nice. better serve yeah. that community. All right, folks, that's the news.